Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Straight Talk Vermont show. I'm Bruce Wilson, Executive Director of Service Rendering Incorporated. And Straight Talk Vermont is one of our programs, along with Arts So Wonderful and United College Club, Get Fit Vermont, a lot of programs. And so um, I'm very, very excited today to sit here with my friend Jim Condes. Jim, welcome, sir. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you for coming on the show. My pleasure. Oh, wow. And so we got a lot to talk about. Yeah, we do. <laughs> so first of all, let's talk about um, you in Vermont. So how, you know, what, what's your memories or what, you know, why, were you born and raised here? I was not born here. I was born actually in New Jersey, but my family moved here when I was four years old. Uh, I grew up in K through 12 in Burlington and South Burlington schools. I went to the old Adams School Elementary School on, on South Union Street, which is no longer. Uh, then went to Burlington High School, Junior High School at Edmonds, and then Burlington High School um, for, I think, through my, into my sophomore year when we moved to South Burlington. Mm -hmm. Finished up in South Burlington, went to the University of Vermont, graduated from the University of Vermont, and, and uh, stayed here my whole work career. Wow. So um, before we get to the last part of your career, you know, Secretary <laughs> of State, which is a big deal, um, let's just talk about... Um, um, after going through, you know, your experience in Vermont, you know, um, you know, when I came in 1989, it was the whitest state in America, and, and then some people say it still is number one, but they say it's number two, you know, which is awesome. I mean, my I actually made yep. a difference, you know. Um, so, what was it like for you to grow up with, um, you know, people who, who who wasn't who didn't look like me around in Vermont, you know, or you know, just people of color or BIPOC? So, I I think. For me, it was a little bit different because I came from New Jersey. Oh, yeah. All my yeah. all my relatives were in New Jersey in the Oranges, uh, Newark uh, area, and so and, and many of my relatives are still down that way. And so I was accustomed to it. I mean, it was not anything real surprising to me. Um, I think at the time, uh, I think there were two black families in. in in Burlington, I think right, one right. was the Washingtons, and and I forget the other. Hines, I think. Yeah, the, the Hines, Hines family, Hines and family. and so it was really it was very little um, uh, impact on on my life for sure, but I think um, it was again I because I we used to go to New Jersey to visit relatives. Right, you see a I lot was of people who look like me. yeah, and and you know we would interact with people, um, neighbors of my grandparents and. Or my aunts and uncles, so it was. Um, it was it, to me. It was not any kind of a right, when big, shock right, or when anything like that. Culture shock or no? <laughs> but well, yeah, just, but I, I get it. I mean, I, I understand how some people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, you know, what, it was a shock, and I, I personally think, and you know, before we were talking a little bit about immigration, and right. I'm as I explained to you, I'm second generation American. All four of my grandparents. Right came to the United States for a better life. Um, and when they got here, they were treated like dirt as well right. um, uh, because they were right. foreign they were and foreign, they didn't yeah. speak much English. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think, you know, if, if I look back on, on my different um, cousins, my aunts and uncles, the things that, that they were able to accomplish uh, and I remember when I first got elected to city council in South Burlington, my, my father was there and he had tears rolling down his eye from his face. Mm -hmm. and, and I said to him, Dad, what's the matter? And he goes, aren't you happy that I'm on city council? And he goes, no, I just wish your grandfather could have seen this. Oh, wow. What an honor, and, right? <laughs> I know, I know. It's how how honorable he felt for, uh, for you being on. So you know, I, and and as I explained mm -hmm. earlier, um, you know, I, I served 18 years on the South Burlington yeah. City Council. I served eight years in the state senate representing yeah. Chittenden County, right. and then the last 12 years I've been Secretary of State. Right. So, uh, you know, I've had a long career. Right. Um, I've accomplished a lot in my career, and uh, uh, I'm looking forward to retirement. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely of the age. <laughs> <laughs> we both are. We both are. Uh, so, um, so, um, so you're Greek, and I, I'm, when I leave here, I'm going to um, 
uh, one I sit on Sydney County Regional Planning Commission. I'm on the board of directors, and and one of our uh, equity managers gonna take me to lunch. And I'm thinking, since we're talking about Greek, I'm like, dang, I, I, I want some Greek food. <laughs> but is there any Greek restaurants here in, in around? Um, in, in the there used here, to be around? several, actually. There used to be several. Um, <laughs> I don't think. To my knowledge, I'm not sure that there are any yeah. anymore. I mean, my my father was in the restaurant business, and he worked with my uncle. Uh, they had my uncle owned two restaurants. Uh, I guess you could call them Greek restaurants. Uh, and then there were other ones. There was the Park Cafe, uh, which was owned by the Pappases. There was uh, another group of Pappases that owned um, uh, another Greek restaurant. There was couple of the diners yeah, that yeah, were in yeah, town yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that were owned by Greeks and and um, you know I mean obviously Greek yeah. food is yeah, it's good I mean I, I like Gero, Gero. Was it, is it Gero or Gyro? Hero. 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 It's wow. it, it sounds like the H-E-R-O oh, but it's Hero. Pr pronounced Hero. it's spelled G-Y-R-O oh, wow. uh, and, and uh, you know I mean I, re I and I remember the, the Sunday night uh, dinners with when we would be in New Jersey at my grandparents um, when all the relatives would come over for dinner you know we'd have 25 people sitting around the you know, my grandfather had like two picnic tables in the in the in the kitchen and and uh, everybody would be sitting around and there'd be like 25 uh, conversations going on <laughs> and everybody knew what everybody else yeah, was, was talking, talking about, about. Yeah, right. that's <laughs> awesome wow that's awesome so um, so all, all the education into the middle school, high schools, and college, now that balled up to be Jim Condes. And so, how did you become? How did you become interested in like uh, politics? You know. Well, I, it's not something I ever thought I would get into. Um, but I was living in South Burlington, and uh, there was a um, a, a zoning uh, issue that came up. Uh, and there was someone from our neighborhood who was walking around talking to people and I said well it'd be better they, they wanted to convert a, a residential house into um, some kind of a business uh, office building and and I remember saying well that's better than if they were trying to make it into a McDonald's or something and they said yeah but the zoning doesn't even allow that oh, and, wow. and okay. that's when I first started to get it inkling in it and you know I, I served on the South Burlington City Center Committee in 1985 right. uh, then I was on the zoning board in the later 80s uh, and then I went from there to the City Council um, I became the chair in 1999 and at the time that I became chair one of the, my first phone calls was to Mayor Peter Clavel to talk about how we can build more affordable housing uh -huh. between right. South Burlington and Burlington. Which we were trying to do or doing anyway right. in South Burlington. Um, and so, um, so, so you was on the city council. I mean, how did you be on the city council for 18 years? Um, six three-year terms. <laughs> oh, I, I'm just saying. I know, I know Burlington had like two-year terms and then that Mayor Clavel turned, yeah. got it shift to three years. But, um, so you is, what inspired you to go so long on the city council? Um, I guess... South Burlington City Council. Yeah, so. it was just because I was involved. And, you know, like you, I served on the, on the Chittenden County Planning Commission. Yeah. I served on the MPO, uh, which dealt with federal dollars for transportation. I served on CCTA, which <laughs> is now Green Mountain Transit. <laughs> uh, I'm, on a, I'm on the Green Mountain um, Transit. So, now. you know, all, all these different... Uh, organizations I served on so I had a vast knowledge yeah. as I was growing into this area and then I ended up um, I, I remember uh, one a friend was leaving South Burlington and said to me I guess I'll see you in the State House at some point <laughs> and I said nah you'll never. never see me there and then two years later yeah, Governor Dean uh, recruited me to run for the wow. uh, Chittenden County Senate and wow. I guess, as I say, the rest is history. <laughs> right, right. So, so let me ask you a question. Let's go back to um, um, 1985 when um, the city center, you know, where they're building up now, right? This um, South yes. Carolina building up the whole city center, which is looking incredibly nice on Merchant Street or Merchant's Row or whatever you call that street. Center, 
no, Merchant Street. Market. Market, Market Street. Street. Market Street. Now, now, why did it take so long? I mean, it felt, is it because of TIFFs fell? Or, well, or? I think that was part of it. Um, I think also there was um, the landowner. It was owned, pretty much most of the land was owned by one landowner, and um, he has since passed away, but, uh, you know, the he was... Obviously, he wanted to make money on it, sure. and you know we kept telling him, "Well, we'll put these rules in place so you can do bigger projects." Uh, but he wasn't interested. He's a, he was an earth mover, and right. and, oh, mm-hmm. and you know he builds streets and roads right. and right. things. Sure, and sure, sure. Um, it was it was tough to convince him mm-hmm. at that time uh, that this was the right thing to do, right. um, and and we tried to incorporate. The university mall involved in right, that, right? Right. Um, and I think that in the future you're going to see some changes with the university yeah, yeah, mall because I, I, malls are going out. Yeah, I, I, and they have a lot of land. Yes, and I think they got uh, six acres or something. The, the university mall, so maybe more. But um, yeah, I know. I, I know. I've seen the plans before. How it was you know um, with the um, previous owners what they what they envisioned. Your town in like movie theaters and housing, putting in street uh, street grids with with apartments, residential okay. units, um, and I think that was a part of the. I think what really uh, helped us um, with not only city center but also with affordable housing um, uh, was was when we changed some of the zoning. For instance, down on Shelburne Road. Where the Shaw's is across from the pri- uh, Price Chopper, um, that that land behind there was basically wasteland. Mm-hmm. It was it was zoned for big boxes, oh, um, and it was about 25 acres. Oh. And we increased the zoning density on that land to about I forget it was about 20 20 acres uh, 20 units per acre oh, or right. something. And now when you go down, down through down. there, you have over 500 units of residential yeah, awesome. housing, yeah. which is on the bus line. Yeah, it's right next to grocery stores, banks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, the, all the yeah. drug stores, yeah, everything you sure need. Is. And it was there was subsidized housing, there was affordable housing, mm-hmm. there was uh, rental units, yeah. there was market rate housing units uh, for uh, uh, you know individually owned uh, condo type. And then there was market rate, and yeah. then and then we also worked with Champlain Housing to build uh, uh, senior housing in that area. So you had a complete cross section. Yes, it, yes. nice. And, so and nice South story. Burlington actually won a, an award, a national oh, award really? for uh, smart growth oh, oh. with that project. Yeah. I used to go back to all the time when I um, when I used to go because um, I was sitting on some things with the United Way into so that. I, yeah. I think they're still there in one of those places. Um, yeah. So so nice. So many houses. So many. Oh, and those buildings have like I've been in them. They have like um, um, like well, fitness centers, and um, they all um have like um, where you can do barbecue. They have all these grills outside, and all kind of cool things that's inside when, those places. When we used to, uh, when uh, in working with Champlain Housing, um, uh, the Burlington Land Trust, uh, all the different affordable housing units. I remember as we were building different um, neighborhoods around the city, um, I was sort of famous for saying, we don't, we don't build projects, we create neighborhoods. No doubt about it. And that was the, I kept saying to people, we have to stop talking about projects. Oh, yeah. Because that's got a bad connotation. Mm-hmm. We want to really? go to neighborhoods, because that's, neighborhoods means it's about people. Exactly. And like I'm from Chicago, so I know about projects. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you know, and and, and I, I think, mm. you know, I think my whole political career has always been about people. Yeah. And, and, I, th- and I think everything you served on has always been about people. Yeah. You know, you people who you um who um you serve and um and so so you so a lot of things have come apart um in South Burlington and City Council. And I work with some of those individuals still and. Um, so now why didn't you why didn't you go for a city manager? I know my good friend uh, he was there for many, many that's years. That's not my that's not my cup of tea. Okay. <laughs> All right, but you know you was you was in charge of a lot of stuff. And, and, and South Burlington, Chuck Hafter was our Chuck. city manager, and he was a really good city he manager. Was. He was the first 
city manager at South Burlington had that was actually trained as a city manager. Oh, really? And, it, and the city manager has to be so, um, how do I, I'll use the word fluent in all the different aspects. Sure. In human resources, in project development, in planning and vision, yeah. and yeah, you know, all, all these that. different things, budgetary. Yeah. So the city manager really has to, you know, they have a good manager there now, uh, Jesse Baker. And, yeah. uh, you know, I think um, it, it's sometimes city managers are hard to come by. Sure. Chuck became city manager the week before I became a city councilor. Uh, so we kind yeah. of grew together yeah. in that in yeah. that role. Yeah, he retired. What's that? What's the guy? Was the treasurer or something who retired with him? He was a long time uh, guy. I can't think of his name, but he was. They were like, ah. But anyways, um, Chuck, I've known him for many years, and he supported my youth programs and projects and events. And and his daughter was on my youth advisory board at one point. And um, he did a lot for us and the youth and, and families around um, that area, and he always looked out for us. And and I, you know, he exactly what you said. He's he's he was all in that, you know. And so he had a, he went to a training. I didn't know, the city managers had to go through. I mean, I guess you have to go get. A, I don't know. There, there's there's a, a international city manager mm. group that meets every year, and That's Chuck used to go to that yeah. at uh, pretty much every year. Um, and and I, I you know he like his daughter and my his oldest daughter and my daughter were the same age mm -hmm. they were in the same classes together and uh, then of course he had his younger daughter Lainey yeah. but um, yes he was on my youth advisory board and, yeah. and you know the, there was a lot going on I mean yeah. you know I, I remember the days with with my daughter and <laughs> you know I was worried about what road she was going to go down and and but you know. She's now an accountant. <laughs> wow, that's a big deal. CPA. So she has two kids and lives in South Burlington. Oh wow, she's with her husband. Stayed. Isn't that awesome? She stayed, man, because it's one of the things about youth who graduate from our wonderful universities and colleges. You know, they they don't stay, man. Well, she came back. She oh, actually, she came back. So she was. Uh, she went to school down in Atlanta. Um, at, at uh, Georgia State University, wow. got her Ooh, degree, that. got her CPA, um, and worked uh, with a large account, national accounting firm. Then requested, she and her husband requested a change uh, to move north, and they moved to uh, uh, Somerville, um, Massachusetts. Yes, yeah. And they were there for about three years before they moved back to Vermont. When, once she had the two kids, um, she wanted to get back to Vermont, and her two kids are now enrolled in the same elementary school oh, she went to. Oh, that she was in. Wow, she went to. Wow, that's, that's so nice to hear people, because one of our situations, and we have a college program called United College Club, and there's different colleges around the, around the state, um, and uh, working with students. And, and one of the things, and, and as you know, we want to try to retain our students. We don't want them to go away from Vermont, but a lot of the situation is like, the, um, whatever they major in, they don't necessarily have that major for them to participate in, it, you know, jobs for them here in the state. And that's the sad part about it. Like, you know, like healthcare and you got social service and these type of things, but a lot of right. engineering jobs and all kind of other type of jobs that um, youth um, major in, we just don't have it for him. So they, it, it they're just forced to enough. go. Right. They're forced to leave, you know. To, to it, it's, <clears throat> it's, you know, you, you're caught between a rock and a hard place because yeah. you, you have to have more development, uh, more growth, mm -hmm. in order to have the jobs available for our youth yes. that are coming up, and and that's kind of a balancing act, and that's yeah. what we always tried to do in South Burlington was yeah. to kind of balance that growth and development versus um, uh, protecting the environment, and and in fact, um, it was, you know, I always used to say to people, mm -hmm. you have to look at the map, you have Burlington. South Burlington curls around from the east to the south. Um, you know, the natural place that we're going to have growth is going to be in South Burlington. Mm -hmm. The question is, how do we grow, and how how do we manage that growth? Mm -hmm. True, true. So. Yeah, that's a natural growth problem. And so, um, now, let me, now you might be able to have an answer to this because obviously it's something that before I got here. How do the Burlington Airport get to be Burlington Airport. 
and it's in South Burlington. Um, well, it, I think it goes back to the 1920s, maybe even the 1910s. Mm. Uh, but Burlington, <laughs> Burlington was looking at, a, at building an airport, um, and they picked that 100 acres or whatever out there, and, and the airport started. It was just a small, small airport at the time. Um, and you know it just grew from there and and uh, you know there's been a, a lot of you know obviously we have uh, the air guard that's there um, uh, and that's been an important fact because mm -hmm. we've gotten a lot of federal dollars for the airport uh, for instance the uh, fire and rescue that are is at the airport mm -hmm. um, is 100 percent paid by the federal government Mm. Um, it's under the auspices of the Air Guard, um, and it's the air, the the airport is such an economic development factor for Vermont. Uh, I think it really started to take off once um, uh, what's his his name his last name was Watson, who was the CEO of IBM, used to come to Vermont oh, mm -hmm. to go skiing. Okay, and then turned around and said, we're going to build a plant in Vermont. Oh, isn't that awesome? <laughs> and he built it in, in nice Essex Junction. Too. Nice when he did a nice So, and, and I think that was where the airport really started to take off and okay. grow more. Um, you know, there have been times where people have said, well, we need to move the airport. Well, you don't just move oh, an yeah. airport. Yeah, I don't know how um, you're going to move it, where you're moving to. Well, that's the question. Where you, It's got to be an area that's pretty open. <laughs> it's like, it's like there's no parking, you know what I mean? <laughs> you're going to move an airport. But let me ask you a question about the airport, another question, too, because, you, know, you, you know, you've been around and, uh, you know, some, you got answers. Um, now, I used to have um, that the, um, the uh, Air Guard, down there on the airport. They used to have the Green Mountain Boys up there. Why did they take that down? That I don't know. I thought it was still up there, but no, that's they're, down. they're still, that's their, if you want to call it call sign for the Air Guard is the Green Mountain Boys. Um, I used to have a, I think I still have the, the Newsweek magazine or Time magazine, I forget which. I think it was Newsweek, um, right after uh, uh, September 11th, um, when, um, I used to live right near the airport, mm -hmm. less than a quarter of a mile from the airport, and I remember on after uh, September 11th, after the attacks on on the U.S., mm -hmm. every four hours there were two jets taking off, two F-16s, fully loaded, fully armed, with two pilots, heading to New York City to fly mm -hmm. protective cover for for New York City. Uh, and there was a picture that was taken of two F-16s from another plane of the two F-16s, and it's right on the side. It said Green Mountain Boys, That's cool, right? and, and you could see, yeah. you know, New York City behind it. Um, but uh, you know, the, the and, and Vermont's Air Guard has been one of the, if not the top air yeah. guard in yeah. the country. I I'm mean, so glad they're there. You know, they got if they had to scramble for some reason. Thank God, and we have them right near us. So what people didn't realize, um, and I remember I, I visited, some of them are, have been friends of mine, some of the pilots, but, but uh, the, at the airport there were um, always two F-16s fully loaded, fully armed, uh, and ready to go on the runway. Two pilots that would be on 24-hour call. Mm. So they were always on, 20, there was a 24-7 uh, approach to it because they had the primary, um, uh, if you want to call it defense, uh, right. once, once if, a, a, if a Russian bear oh, okay. came across <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, the ocean sure. uh, and, and came by Greenland, our guys would pick them up and travel with them down oh. and hand them off to Virginia or, oh, or, gotcha. or New Jersey or something. But, but it used to take, yeah. from the time the, sound, the alarm sounded for the, for the air guard, it would be two minutes they were in the air, seven or nine minutes they were out over the Atlantic. Wow. And that's from here in Vermont. Wow. So we're not going to talk much about this, but since we're talking about the air, air guard and the F-16s, so what's your feeling about the F-35s? <sighs> You probably knew I was going to say that. Yeah, it, 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 it's a it's a it's a tough piece, but I I think 
we have to remember the mission mm -hmm. that they have, and they have a defensive mission. Um, and the F-35s are just, you know, it was because our air guard was so good that the F-35, we were the first, to get Vermont them. was the first F, uh, National Guard or air guard that received F-35s. Right. Right. So it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. Um, I've been mm -hmm. over to the airport. I went deliberately to listen to um, the noise to see how bad it was. I, you know, I used, and like I said, I used to live next to the airport, right. and and I just, you know, I I get it. It, it can be disturbing at yeah, times, but it's not. It's only for a few seconds. Why, why is it? Why are they louder than F sixteen? I mean, what well, it's, it's, it's like the engine, them? the way the engine is. And oh, it's, right. a, I think it's a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Sure. But, all right, so so um, you live in Montpelier now, but so does it have something? To, well, you you are um, a state senator for eight years, right? From Chittenden County. From Chittenden County, state senator. So how was that? I mean, what did you do? Did you accomplish anything? Yeah, well, I was uh, <coughs> chair of, of the education committee at one point, <coughs> and, then, and then chair of mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Senate government operations, which Senate government operations. Uh, actually oversees the Secretary of State's office and um, uh, you know all the election stuff uh, uh, retirements uh, labor uh, issues so I I was in heavily involved in the in those discussions and, and bills as they processed for instance we we did back in around 2005 um, the first major uh, retirement reform issues to bring it kind of under control, and uh, of course, it, it continued to to spiral after that. But that was for other reasons. Um, but but you know, I think um, there was a lot of things going on at the time, and you know, like I said, I was the chair of this group, and then uh, when Secretary Markowitz before me decided to uh, retire herself, she ran for governor. Um, you know, she suggested that I consider running for Secretary of State, and I did. Mm -hmm. Oh, awesome! So, is Secretary, not Secretary of State, but um, State Senate sen Senator, uh, a two-year term or a four-year term? It's a two-year term. I served four <laughs> two-year terms. <laughs> yes, uh, and, and, and it actually, was elected. Even, it was elected, and as is <laughs> Secretary of State is is two-year terms, as is the governor's and, and lieutenant governor's uh -huh, office. Uh -huh. So, Vermont is one of two states left in the country that is uh, two-year terms. It's mm -hmm. us in New Hampshire. Uh, every other state has gone to four-year terms. Oh, wow. And so the people elected and, you. Yes, and I, I actually support four-year terms because I think it allows yeah, for better can, planning sure. and vision yeah, then you can get to the future. Too, yes, right? exactly. You know, you can really say... You're not always running. Yeah, exactly. Because you know what, you have to, at two years, you have to run, you start running... In this. Six months after you start. <laughs> <laughs> So I know that's, but you know, um, yeah. So it's important that you be able to uh, be able to do what you say. You know what I mean? Because if your platform is this, that, and other, then you want to be able to do it. But then, but you you need more like than one term to do it. If you got right. So, well, you know, if you're doing, for instance, IT projects, um, solutions for IT takes more than two years. Yeah, sure. Because you got to do all the planning first before you actually go to an RFP mm -hmm. and then start the implementation. Yeah. So you need to go more than two years on that. Mm -hmm. And you know, when I first took office, Bruce, it was everything we did in the, in the office, all divisions of, of the Secretary of State's office, it was done on a piece of paper. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, you filed your annual report for your business on a piece of paper. You filed uh, a lien on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. You filed for your professional license on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. All your campaign finance reports for elections were on a piece of paper, and um, it was really problematic. And and um, I think by 2015 we had converted everything. So it took five years, but we had converted everything over to a digital environment. And you know, I mean, I even had lobbyists coming to us because they had to file their their reports on on paper, and they said we'll pay more. But we need to do this right. on a digital environment, so we were able to accomplish all that. And that's that is probably one of the. If I had to pick one thing that we did, aside from the voting rights issues, uh, but it's the one thing that we did that went across the entire Secretary of State's office 
was going from a paper environment to a digital environment because it allowed us, we had literally 0% um, activity on mm-hmm. online. Right. And then we had now over 98%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so you, um, so as Secretary of State, which you retired from, retiring, are you retired? You retired. Retired um, in January. So, uh, <laughs> are you actually smiling about this? <laughs> 12 years. Okay, so, my man, 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 Secretary of State office have so many categories underneath it. You know, you have the corporate and this, that, and, you know, you name you name. All right, you so we stuff. have, the, f- the first one obviously is corporate registration. So if you want to do business in Vermont, you have to register with our office, through our office. Um, that's the first thing. If a business has a lien against another business, that gets filed in our office. Um, annual reports, nonprofits, they have to file reports right. with us. Um, second one is the state archives and records management unit. Um, we have a state archives. I had, when I took over, it was, they had just completed a new uh, state archives, which is a state of the art archives. Our most precious documents are kept there. The, the Vermont Constitution, mm. the Bill of Rights that wow. we signed, that the U.S. that the Vermont Legislature signed and sent to Washington for the U.S. Bill of Rights, we have those documents in in the archives. When uh, Hurricane Irene hit Vermont and wiped out hundreds of bridges and th- hundreds and hundreds of miles of roads, right after. The Agency of Natural Resources and the Agency of Transportation were in our archives pulling the old maps out so they could see where the roads used to be (laughs) so they knew how to rebuild how to rebuild the state. Yeah, right. Um, So the the archives. um, Then we had the Office of Professional Regulation, which is the licensing. We have over 50 professions, uh, 80,000 licensees, um, nursing. Mm -hmm tattooists, uh, barbers, cosmetologists, um, pretty much all the healthcare fields except for the doctors which remain under um, the Department of Health. But everything else is uh, is with us. Um, what about DMV? Is that Department of Motor Vehicles? Is that underneath? Uh, in three states, it's under the Secretary of State. Right. Maine, Illinois, and Michigan. In Vermont, it's under the transportation. Oh, really? Mm. So, but, you know, and then, of course, the one that probably the office is best known for is um, elections. Yeah. Now, so so um, so the treasury is you 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 sign the checks, right? No. That's not No, you. that's the treasurer, treasurer. actually does okay. that. Okay. 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 So so what is you think um, when you're, you have 12 years being the secretary of state, which is a gigantic position. That's something you have to run for though. I, I did have to run for it. Oh, okay. I, I have to get elected. Oh, that's right. You do have to get elected for. I'm one of the. I'm one of uh, five <laughs> constitutional officers. And so I'm independently elected from the governor. So yeah, technically, that's right. I don't have I'm to gonna, listen to the I'm governor for you every time. <laughs> and so it's so it's um, it's just you know I think what do you think? You think people vote for you because of your service, or do you think they see your name? Because your, uh, your name is probably like, a little bit of both. I think I think you know I've I've earned a reputation. Of running the office um, in a nonpartisan fashion, um, you know, I I held it, my staff to that high high bar that we're not going to pick sides. We're going to follow the law. Um, that uh, you know we look to be as efficient as possible. One of the first things we did when I took out over in 2011 was to um, do a, have a hire a, a, a professional firm to come in and look at the entire organization, you know, mm-hmm. look at the different positions and, and make suggestions to us on how we can improve efficiency. Um, and, and my goal was, some people thought, oh, he's going to fire people. No, uh-huh. my goal was to make it, make people's jobs easier okay. to accomplish more. Mm-hmm. And that's what we were able to do. So, um, you know, on, from a budgetary standpoint, we, the Secretary of State's office used to get 1.8 million 
um, a year from the general fund, the legislature would appropriate it. Mm -hmm. um, and I realized shortly after I took over that we really didn't need it mm -hmm. because we had um, we we had enough in our fees coming in. So we gave that 1.8 million back to the legislature and said, "You guys keep it and use it where you want." And and um, you know, so I, I I've always been about efficiency, productivity, about uh, changing to a digital environment, um, about being fair and honest with my staff. Um, it, you know, I think it's it's always. I'm only as good as the staff that I have working for me, and. And, um, you know, we had good people uh, in the office. Um, and I think every time we, we had an opening, if, a, if there was a vacancy, if someone left, we wouldn't just automatically fill it. We would look at it and say, do we need it? Do we need it doing what it's doing now? Or could we use that position for something else? So we were always looking at how we could adjust um, and, and be better. Yeah, that's cool. So we got like four minutes, like four minutes left. Okay. So Jim, um, what do you think of the um, state of the of Vermont now? We, how, what do you think? What the, where are we headed to? Is it in a good direction, or you feel like? Uh, what do you What do you think about well, everything about what's going on right now? I, I, Bruce, I think that Vermont is in a good place. I think um, we're we're well suited and well set up for climate change as it as it starts to occur um, and it has been and um, I think COVID showed us that a lot of people were moving to Vermont mm -hmm. um, and and I think you know we just have to make sure we we don't um, overspend we don't, that we don't overuse uh, some of the functions we need to pay attention more to what the people and families need. Um, I think that's important. Um, uh, and I think that it's, um, you, know, you know, I think w what we've done with elections to make it accessible for as many people as possible. Um, I, I've always said that, uh, you know, when people talk about voter fraud as is really big across the country right now. Right. Well, in my opinion, the true voter fraud in this country is denying any eligible American the right to vote. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, it, it really disgusts me to see what's going on around the country. Yeah. Um, but I can't, I couldn't deal with what they were doing. Right. I had to deal with what I had. No doubt about it. No so. doubt about it. And so, you know, so now you can deal with some other issues. You can look at some broad issues. You know, some candidates are, are um, for our national um, seats in the country are, you know, are kind of, I don't know, different from how normal traditional ways of, let's say, how a president might Exactly. Be, you, know, you know, so, and um, it's kind of interesting, you know, because a lot of people believe in some of these, uh, and, and hundreds of thousands of people believe in some of these people like, um, who are not traditional in the way how presidents usually are, are you know, which is, you know, kind of weird to me, but. You know. I always I always say whether it's at, at city council level or at a state senate or a statewide office or a national office, experience matters. No doubt about it. You're right about that. You're right about that. Experience matters. So um, what else you want to? You, so um, what you say is going to see your grandkids after this or? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I've taken I, I, the I, I started um, my retirement. The night before I was retiring, I contracted COVID. Mm -hmm. So I made it through three years without it. And then the, the night before I retired, <laughs> I got it. So I was kind of down and out for about two to three weeks. Right. Um, and since that time, I've just been doing stuff around the house. I'm anxious to get outdoors and work in, in the yard and, and oh, that's awesome. garden and stuff. And I've got, you know, two grandkids on my side and two grandkids on my my partner's side, oh, awesome. so you know awesome. we're we're re really interested in oh, being awesome. able to travel as much as possible. That's awesome. So, and we want to do some traveling anyway. No, no doubt you need to. You know, you should. You know, maybe you should drive around, see, check out stuff. You know, you know, you've been, you know, you know, you've been in Vermont a lot. You've done a lot for the state, and I want to thank you for all the things that you've done for uh, people who you serve. You know, people like me, and um, and the state is in a good place. Always has been a good place. And you know, I looked over. Uh, 
um, how many times you have to look over um, the um, Secretary of State's um, website, and it's, it's in good order too. You know, it's, you, can, you can actually um, check, you know, find what you're looking for. You know, you don't have to, you know, God, do it, do it, and I'll forget it. You know, what I mean, you can actually find what you're looking for. Go to that left side, you, you know, up top, bro. Well, you know, a lot <laughs> see of work. See your smiling goes, face in the way. <laughs> a lot of work goes into it, and my my successor will do will be great. She'll she'll. She'll be fine, like me. She was chair of the committee in the in the House that sure. uh, oversaw the Secretary of State's office. So uh, Sarah will be very good at, at what she does going forward. I'm, you know, we periodically meet to have coffee and sure. talk about it. And um, you know, I, I'm I'm really hopeful that mm -hmm. that things will be. Yeah. In, in good shape going forward. Sure, and you know, a lot of people need to probably come back and ask you questions, you know what I mean, because how to do this and how to do that, this is the easiest thing they can do is to talk to a person who's done I'm the here. job. <laughs> You're there. Well, you got anything you want to add, sir, Mr. Uh, Jim Condes? No, this has been great. Um, yeah. You know, like, I, I've got over 35 years as, wow. as in, in public looking elected good, office. You're looking good, looking fresh Thank you. and, you know, nice. I'm going to have to borrow that blazer and that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, it, it's just uh, it's been a long time coming, but uh, I'm ready. Yes, sir. Well, thank you for being on um, Straight thank Talk you, Vermont Bruce. Show, sir, and thank you everyone for tuning in to the Straight Talk Vermont Show, and see you next time. Mm -hmm.